started recording. Okay, then. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, so good afternoon to everybody. Uh, we are going uh, to presentation of the next uh, module. I will share my uh, screen. Uh, so please tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, it's yes. clear. Okay, that's good. Uh, so actually this module is the third module in the line of the OptimTex project and it is called Design and Modeling of Garments by 3D Scanning uh, Software and CAD PDS Software. Today I'm a presenter of this module, but um, I should say that of course uh, we are more authors of uh, this uh, module. This is the assistant professor Andrei Tsupar me and Professor uh, Zoran Stepanovic. Um, well, we all are working uh, on University of Maribor, on Faculty of uh, Mechanical uh, Engineering, uh, which is located in Maribor in Slovenia. And uh, with Zoran, we are from the same institute, but Andre is coming from the Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, and uh, we with Zoran, we are coming from Institute of Engineering, Materials and Design. So uh, we are a perfect uh, interdisciplinary team for uh, such kind of module. Um, firstly, I would like uh, to show everybody who's not been probably in Slovenia, where the Slovenia is located. Uh, we have uh, neighbors in Austria, Italy, Croatia, and a bit uh, uh, Hungary. And uh, the Maribor lies uh, on the northeast part of the Slovenia, which have some shape of a bird. So the Maribor is the second biggest uh, city in Slovenia and the largest city of uh, the traditional region of Lower Styria. Uh, it is also the seat of city municipality of Maribor and the um, seat of the Drava statistical region. Uh, you can see that near Maribor there is the Drava river and uh, also is the seat of Eastern Slovenian region. So um, Maribor is also economic, administrative, uh, educational and cultural center of Eastern Slovenia. Uh, so um, Maribor was firstly mentioned as a castle in 1864, as a settlement in uh, 1209, and as a city in uh, 1245. Um, it's also to be good to mention that Maribor, along with uh, our colleagues from, Porto, uh, from Portugal, from Guimarães, Maribor was selected uh, uh, as the European capital of the culture for year uh, 2012. Um, so in Maribor, you can see um, have a um, very big history in the city center we have a lot of uh, squares with uh, very uh, with old uh, uh, architecture uh, near the city center we have a city park a very very nice city park with some small uh, lakes and uh, surrounding uh, there is the city park and uh, there in the surrounding on the north side we have some hills um, where we are going uh, to very short walking uh, even through the the working days this is the piramida and also calvaria but uh, on the uh, south part there is a, a pohoria hill um, where we can, we are using it on the winter time for a skiing and uh, also I don't know if you know that we have this uh, skiing golden race um, um, 
golden fox for women's championship uh, so uh, i can uh, uh, i watch the pohoria through uh, my window and i could not see on that part uh, uh, much snow but on the other side uh, there is uh, still enough snow for skiing in that time but uh, in the winter time of course uh, the pohoria offers uh, very very good uh, hiking paths uh, through many many beautiful places um, of course in maribor is a very social uh, city we have a lot of uh, theaters opera house with very famous ballet opera ensembles and also we have um, Enjoy uh, your place in the Maribor. Um, the the biggest famous festival in Maribor it's called Lent. Uh, it's starting at the end of the um, June when is the primary and secondary uh, school is finishing, and it's the biggest I think uh, festival in Maribor, which. Um, to which um, come uh, very famous artists from all over the world. Um, so let's a little bit uh, talk about our university to present it. Um, in Slovenia is the second biggest university, uh, which have uh, with 17 faculties and over there 14,000 students and uh, uh, approximately 2,000 employees. Um, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, probably at uh, my uh, presentation when I'm starting, uh, um, you're asking why Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, but there you could see that in 1959, our faculty is born, uh, born like a college of engineering and technology with two departments, mechanical engineering and textile technology. That's why we are still in this uh, faculty from uh, their uh, early birth. So in 1985, it became faculty of technical science and uh, from 1995, uh, it, uh, the faculty became faculty of mechanical engineering and um, the faculty have more than now, more than 9,000 uh, graduates uh, of uh, all levels. Um, so uh, in uh, the, uh, our um, institute and a chair, we have uh, different study uh, programs uh, at all levels, design and textile materials. So we have two undergraduate programs, uh, two master study programs and one doctoral study program. And in the last year, we are starting also with, um, uh, in combination with the mechanical engineering, the uh, master study program, industrial engineering, where is uh, also um, uh, our um, field of teaching. Um, so, uh, this is some uh, short introduction to our university, to our faculty. And uh, we are approaching the presentation of uh, module three. Um, entitled Design and Modeling of Garments by 3D Scanning Software and CAD PDS Software. So uh, this module provides four examples regarding the 3D human body scanning using the 3D photogrammetry, 3D human body modeling and reconstruction, construction of a kinematic 3D body model, and the last um, example is the 3D virtual prototyping of personalized garments. So, um, I could say that uh, the module is very, very complex because uh, we want uh, to show you the entire process 
for the needs of uh, 3D virtual um, prototyping of personalized garments. This would be the smart personalized um, garments. And that at the end of this process that we could develop uh, with um, 3D software, the personalized smart garments, we need um, a 3D human body scanning to scan a 3D human body in uh, different postures, in postures, what we need to develop such kind of garments. So uh, after each uh, scanning process, uh, we should perform the 3D human body modeling, which is the second example. And if we have opportunity not to make a lot of scans in different body postures, uh, which are needed for development of garments, we could perform a kinematic 3D body uh, model uh, that um, with the aim to very easily and quickly adjust a, a body model to different postures with the aim to develop the personalized garments in virtual environment. So I will move now uh, in um, Ops into the platform and go um, and explain you all the cases through the um, teaching materials on the platform. So uh, probably you are maybe uh, screw through the platform. Uh, yes, of course, you can found it as Razvan and Benny before shows you that there uh, in English version we have also um, all of our modules. And there we have our module with a first case which are presenting a 3D human body scanning using the 3D photogrammetry. Why the 3D photogrammetry? Probably you know that, um, that currently the most used scanning methods are um, uh, based on the laser scanning or uh, on the pattern pro projection technologies. But uh, today um, the um, 3D photogrammetry uh, also somebody calls um, it the 4D scanning because with, uh, with, uh, with this approach uh, we can scan in just one second or less the, uh, the body in, in action, in moving. So we, we can scan actually body in, in any kind um, of, um, in any kind of um, posture. Uh, during a motion, uh, which is very good, especially uh, to adopt the 3D body model for development of personalized clothing. So uh, I don't know, uh, have anyone uh, between of students the experiences with uh, 3D body scanning with any of methods? Okay, so uh, th this is uh, one uh, picture of uh, laser scanning. You could see uh, there um, uh, some uh, standard posture for this scanning, uh, where uh, where the person have uh, um, arms a little bit uh, upraised and some uh, and also the legs are a little bit spread that there the laser scanner which are projecting the, the laser um, um, projection onto the body that can capture also uh, the body below the joints in every position 
which are needed uh, for forming of a 3D body. Mesh, there we could see the person who, uh, who are working with a, a scanner. So, um, and the, the next one, how, how to do this? So there is the projection of laser light on the object, or in our case, we have uh, this, uh, this, uh, the body. Uh, the human body, and there is the camera uh, which are capturing this uh, laser um, stripes method. And then um, the, the next uh, approach is uh, with a pattern projection onto the body, which can be the horizontal or uh, vertical uh, stripes. Sorry. Um, Yes, so um, for um, the 3D um, photogrammetry, for that kind of approach, uh, we are using a lot of uh, cameras uh, in uh, some area, in a scanning area, so, and we are making uh, shots uh, on a person from uh, different highs and from different angles uh, around a person. So we are capturing uh, uh, photos of a human body from different views. This is uh, uh, some uh, very uh, good uh, Big Alice called photogrammetric uh, scanning uh, studio. So uh, this is uh, one approach, but you will see that uh, we are using a bit another approach presented in this, um, in this case, um, that uh, we will make a video and we will extract from video the photos from which we will perform uh, or carry out in the continuation the uh, human 3D body model. So what actually the photogrammetry is, is a technique to obtain reliable information about physical objects or subjects and of course the environment. So um, I'm sure that uh, you heard about uh, photogrammetry and you heard about the topographics maps and that uh, the topography concerns with the shape and uh, character of the Earth's uh, surface. So, uh, and the use of uh, photographs to create topographic smacks was firstly proposed uh, in about 1840 by the French surveyor Dominique F. Argo. So today we are using also these uh, topographic uh, maps uh, also for uh, designing of uh, 3D body models. Um, yes. Um, um, the next uh, in our teaching material is explained the structure from motion SMF, um, abbreviation, so the photogrammetry, we say that is science of making measurements from photographs. So, and photography is the projection of a 3D scene onto a 2D plan, losing adapt information. But the goal of photogrammetry is to reverse of this process, actually. And this uh, structure from motion is based on principles of uh, 3D photogrammetry, where we are performing a uh, triangulation uh, to calculate the relative position of the 3D points from stereo pairs of pictures. So uh, in this um, figure, we could see there are a lot of cameras and points in um, environment and this is a lot of stereo pairs which are uh, needed uh, for uh, performing a triangulation of each point because the each 
what means this point what i'm talking about it is the just a bit somewhere there it is okay let's go yes um and there we could see that um the three d body models there are a lot of three d body models and each of these have a three d body a three d mesh of the body of the body surface so uh each of these point or point clouds should be triangulated that uh, the uh, each of um, um of the points can be connected into a body mesh. Um, uh, in the teaching material uh, is uh, briefly presented also the programs for 3D reconstruction. So, uh, uh, um, and there uh, you can see that there is the visual SMF, which is also free um, a software for 3D reconstruction. Then is a mesh room, uh, which is a free and open source 3D reconstruction software, uh, which we will use it um, also tomorrow when we have a practical work with you. Um, uh, and it works in Win uh, Windows and Linux platforms. So uh, then you have also for 3D reconstruction, the 3D, Regard 3D, the, uh, uh, which is a free and open source uh, program, but reality capture and photo modeler and recap, they are uh, professional softwares for uh, 3D reconstruction of uh, 3D body model mesh. Um, how to extract, um, uh, no, I will say that we need, as I said, that we will, in our practical work, we will work with a video. So, and that we could perform uh, SMF, we need to extract uh, pictures from a video. And uh, for this, we will use the pot player which is a free software for extraction of pictures from a video. So um, my colleague Andre uh, will uh, work with you uh, tomorrow and you will go through some um, a, a very simple, um, simple um, way through the pot player and after that with a mesh room. So uh, what doing the plot, plot player, as I said, we are importing a video file into it and then exporting or extracting the um, images, uh, pictures from the video file, which are needed for a 3D reconstruction of uh, the object. Um, we have also a lot of Android applications for 3D object reconstructions. Uh, some of them are uh, free, um, not some, many of them are free, but for um, uh, exporting the, the uh, 3D files of the 3D object, uh, um, they are uh, became uh, chargeable, like Scan 3D, 3D Scanner Pro, 3D Life uh, Scanner. Um, so as we said, each each uh, case have also a theory. And there is very slightly described the theory how from uh, pictures, when we are um, making uh, pictures in a scanning room uh, with photos or with extraction of uh, pictures from a video files, uh, how uh, we can um, 
perform each point on the point cloud of the 3D body model mesh. And uh, the basic idea behind this uh, 3D photogrammetry is the geomet geometry of stereo vision, and it is called uh, epipolar uh, geometry. So, uh, and uh, the epipolar geometry already um, use uh, uh, a pair of stemmer, uh, stereo cameras and using a pin hold a model. So, um, mainly of this uh, will describe you tomorrow, uh, Andre. That's why uh, we can go a bit further. In uh, this application, you will see that um, all modules are uh, very well um, presented with uh, video materials. And as I said, uh, that for 3D human body scanning using this photogrammetry approach, we will use a pot player mesh room and then uh, also a blender. And we will show you exactly step by step how to do this. In the meantime or till tomorrow, you can also watch the presented uh, steps in the video. But um, I will ask you and Andre ask you that till tomorrow, uh, you install the pod player into your uh, computers. Uh, of course, it is free from down download. And the mesh room, uh, also the mesh room on your computers. At the end, I will uh, send you all these links that you can uh, download uh, the um, softwares, the needed softwares for tomorrow. Um, I don't know, the pr presentation of the first module was very uh, brief. Uh, if you have any questions. Okay, uh, then we can uh, go uh, to the next case. The next case uh, is 3 the human body modeling and reconstruction. So, um, yes, we, we scan a human body, but this scan um, is not good enough that we can uh, import it into uh, some um, software for like there. Do you see on the screen uh, this uh, 3D body model? Yes, we see. Okay, so uh, this scan, uh, it's not enough good at th this step after scanning that we can import it into um, uh, cut uh, software for uh, virtual prototyping of garments. We are using their Optitex PDS software, but um, there is the need, firstly, to uh, model and reconstruct, uh, to, to perform modeling and reconstruction of this scanned um, human. So, uh, what is the, the, the main uh, problem? So, uh, sorry, I want to show you on that way to explain you, like there. There we could see a scan of one uh, of a pair of legs, and this is our uh, mesh. And we could see that there is a lot of defects and holes uh, in the scan, uh, which happen uh, with uh, any uh, time, uh, with any type of, of uh, scanning, um, uh, uh, scanning um, procedure, or with laser scanner, or with uh, uh, 
um, uh, with optical scanners, uh, uh, and we need to model the um, the three D uh, human body mesh. Uh, so, um, in the human body mesh, um, we have um, the overall quality of the uh, scanned 3D point data set depends on the for, on, on some parameters. Of course, on density, um, uh, um, that means how to present the continuous surface of the human body. So we should have uh, enough points per unit surface area that uh, we can at the end receive the very good and very smooth, very clear 3D body model mesh. Of course, uh, accuracy is uh, there of big of interest to be a good. So the scan at points must lie on the body uh, within some uh, tolerance. And completeness, that means that a data set is a complete uh, if all parts of the object surface are represented with uh, points of uh, sufficient and reasonable uniform of spatial density. Um, the, the next problem uh, during, uh, during scanning is also the noise, uh, which is related to range of accuracy uh, of the 3D scanning technique. Um, and the second problem is related to the occlusions that affect the completeness of the data set. And uh, the third problem is related to the data re registration and calibration of the scanner camera, which is very important to do this before of the, the scanning. Um, there, I, I somehow, uh, there is not a lot of, um, uh, everything uh, what is in this chapter so i'm, I'm moving now into the word uh, file there you could see the errors uh, which um, um, arise during scanning of the human body so uh, i could say that these errors uh, uh, that we receive um, less errors when we are scanning a person in a standard standing posture with uh, hands uh, um, and uh, legs a little bit spread. But when we are uh, scanning with a human body uh, scanners or um, 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 the, um, uh, the human body in different postures, like in uh, this example in a sitting posture, then we have uh, a lot of um, vertical surfaces of the of the human body and um, a different angles uh, on the human body, uh, which the laser scanner or other scanners could not detect. And that's why we could see there on these figures a lot of defects and that means that we should reconstruct uh, this human body because when we are importing a human body into the CAD PDS software uh, this human body should be a watertight you, you could see that there there is no holes anymore and um, so the this step is how to uh, perform the human body modeling and reconstruction. So, um, uh, in in uh, our in this uh, teaching material, we are uh, using and presenting um, the modeling and reconstruction by uh, using Sense software. Why with a Sense software? because it is a um, very, how to say, simple software for 3D reconstruction and that everybody who till now is not working with the scanners, with reconstruction, with modeling, um, can do this and follow us uh, during the practical work 
uh, very very easily and uh, very easily and to understand all of these uh, approaches how to receive a watertight 3d body um, uh, human body mesh uh, which is intended for um, for development of personalized garment in a virtual environment so uh, for um, this part for this uh, second case, uh, we used a hand scanner. This is an optical hand scanner, um, uh, uh, which um, um, give us um, uh, three um, uh, options uh, that we could um, take a scanning of the objects of the head and of the whole body. So uh, I should say that the whole body for scanning with this uh, hand scanner, um, um, with this we are not receiving very good results, but with uh, parts of the body, we could do this very well. So, um, but uh, working and handling with uh, every scanner, um, it is very good that firstly we are trying to, to work with all of um, um, scanning options to see which, um, which options give us the, the best results. So for scanning of our legs, what I showed you before, we are using the, uh, the highest geometry resolution not um, the, the largest scan volume, but uh, somewhere between. Um, and uh, we use track assist and uh, so on, uh, and object recognition um, options. So, uh, as I said, this is a very, very um, uh, simple scanner uh, and simple to work with it. Uh, so, uh, when a uh, completed scan, uh, usually, as you see, contains holes, areas of uh, overlapping and uh, junctions, um, and we have uh, also scanned um, the surrounding of a scanned uh, subject. And that's why uh, we could work with this um, SENSE software um, with a crop, trim, erase, and repair tool. And um, I can show you short, shortly uh, how we can uh, work with this. What that means. So the crop tool, we could adjust the crop tool. It go very simply. Uh, and with apply, we are cropping the area around the, the cube. And uh, if we are not finishing and we are loading again, we say now save a model. We could also make a um, trim. Uh, trim tool and say apply and you could see uh, what is streaming it is streaming this part uh, which I don't want to trim it so uh, then uh, there is uh, the simple erase tool And what means um, repair tool? That we are uh, can perform a filling of the holes into our body model. Very, very easily but uh, i'm not uh, showing you from the right position that you could see uh, what happening so uh, of course uh, everything uh, and we could make a surface reconstruction of a 3d body model 
you could see now we are automatically filling the holes or we could solidify our 3D body model um, with which we are, um, this could take, um, yeah, but it was very fast, with which we perform at the end the watertight model. So uh, the sense uh, software, you see, <laughs> some, something quickly bad, uh, un, uh, what we cannot use it for our uh, working uh, was uh, carried out, but uh, we can, uh, you can download the sense, um, the sense software freely from the uh, this uh, website, and um, it is a bit uh, what I'm uh, read now this morning that uh, sense one and sense two scanners. Uh, have uh, been discounted and are now available anymore for a sale, but uh, the software uh, will be available and um, uh, all of uh, support uh, till end of this year. Uh, so for, for students work for first steps of scanning, it, uh, it is um, this scanner and the software is very good. Um, but anyway, um, also I will send you uh, this um, web link and uh, also this uh, um, and this uh, part of the legs that, that you can work freely um, with uh, leg to receive uh, our uh, one lack uh, which we are needed it for the the next case for um, construction of a kinematic uh, human body model we will use you will see um, uh, further the uh, this part uh, one part of the lack with a knee so uh, we go we can go back in our uh, model on the platform where is the teaching material and uh, for a theory we have uh, choose to uh, present you uh, what is the binary file uh, uh, the binary representation of the STL file format is very simple and openly documented format for describing uh, the uh, of the surface of the object as a triangular mesh. Uh, you see before that our legs have a triangular mesh. So, um, and uh, we uh, have um, in um, this STL file uh, has uh, for, um, uh, we are using it for rapid prototyping, for 3D printing, and for practical use, um, the binary variant is uh, more common than uh, ASCII file. So uh, there you could see uh, in these uh, figures for this mesh of a DITSA, this um, how is represented the ASCII file and how is represented the binary file. Um, So, as I said, uh, tomorrow we will work uh, shortly with a Sense software and in this video is uh, um, described um, very well how to work with all of these uh, tools with um, crop, trim, erase and repair tool to receive uh, our um, lag uh, what we are needed it for the for our next um, for our next uh, case. So the result will be this part of the leg with a knee. Um, maybe some questions, some comments uh, on on this uh, second case.
So I, I have only one uh, screen and that's why I don't see if anybody raise hand, <laughs> probably. <laughs> anyway, you could switch on microphone uh, if uh, somebody wants to comment or ask uh, anything. Um, probably we, we could go uh, on a case uh, three. Yes, the case three is a construction of a kinematic 3D body model. Um, what uh, means a kinematic 3D body model? The purpose uh, of uh, building of such kind body model is to uh, adapt the body to different uh, positions, postures, um, in any posture that we need to develop uh, the personalized garment in a virtual environment. So if we have this kinematic 3D body model, um, this process adapting of body is uh, much more faster than um, a scanning of the body, uh, a scanning of the body in different postures, because then we should perform a 3D reconstruction and modeling of body and export in STL, OBG or any other, any kind of other files which support our CAD system. So it is really very good if we have a kinematic 3D body model. So, um, uh, virtual kinematic, as I said, enables us to take any pose with existing generic human models. So, in, in a lot of programs you could see and you could take already um, these generic human body models. This is a presentation in Blender, where you, you have uh, 3D scans of the body and you could position the armature of the human body skeleton within the, the 3D body mesh. But another approach is that we are using our scans, our scanned uh, human body and uh, putting within it the uh, skeleton with all bones and with all joints. Um, why, why, why joints? Um, because um, we need to know for performing, for construction of a kinematic uh, human body model, we need to know um, a bit about human anatomy and we need to know about our joints and our rotation, um, not rotation, rotation and movement of our joints. And we need to know the mechanics uh, of our joints and uh, the joint uh, types are usually divided uh, according to their mechanics and they are pivot, hinge, ball and socket joints, condyloid uh, um, uh, saddle and plane joints. Um, I, um, I know that you know that uh, our arms in the shoulders have a very, that we have a very movable joints and that in uh, our hips uh, we are very movable, but um, comparing to the, to the knee, uh, which are bending um, up and down and a little bit side and we, could perform some rotations, but not such kind of rotations like in, in shoulders or in hips or even in fingers. So why we need to know this? That, um, that we uh, make um, in, the, in the program, in the software, all of these uh, constrictions regarding the joints of movements of the joints, otherwise we could make movements in, um, in an abnormal ways. Uh, uh, okay, we will use uh, for, um, uh, in our case, um, uh, the Blender software for construction of kinematic um, 3D body part. 3D body part will be 
our uh, leg with a part of the leg with a knee in the middle. And uh, as we said, we choose the, the free open source uh, program, the Blender, uh, which is uh, very good for visual, 3D visualizations, uh, such as still images, 3D animations, uh, wave effects, uh, visual effects, uh, video editing, uh, a lot of this um, we could perform with it. And uh, it also supports the modules for modeling, rendering, animation, and uh, many types of uh, simulations. So um, it is um, very, very complex uh, software. Therefore, uh, we are focusing um, and during our teaching, we will focus only on uh, several parts of modeling and rigging, which will be exp uh, which is explained in the, the section of uh, application. And uh, also in the first video in application, there is um, a short uh, presentation of Blender 3D, how to work with this, um, what uh, areas on Blender means, uh, how to use very quick, very, uh, so very uh, quick uh, and short presentation, but good presentation, how to work with Blender uh, on general. So, uh, in uh, Blender, um, we have armature. Armature, which is the type of object uh, for rigging. Uh, what is a ridge? Ridge refers to the controls and strings that move a marionette or puppet. Okay, a lot of uh, words, but um, if we are go further, on the on the next uh, part of the chapter uh, we could see there that uh, we could imagine that kinematic 3d body model um, consists of two layers one is articulated structure of skeleton in forms of um, a backbone of the model and this structure is arranged in hierarchy uh, as a parent. And then we have, as we see in figures uh, before, um, an external geometric skin uh, whose deformations are driven by underlying uh, articulated uh, structure of the uh, skeleton. And um, skinning is a type uh, of a surface deformer that works locally. So when we perform a skinning, there uh, every uh, skin vertex, uh, vertex uh, the point P, is expressed as linear combination of uh, offset points, P points of each data set point on the 3D body mesh, of which is ridging transformed by um, uh, associated uh, skeletal coordinates. So um, that's why we can perform the movement of the 3D body mesh. So uh, as I said, in application, uh, we will use the Blender 3D I, I hope that in May, uh, we, when is the next course, um, we will meet in Maribor and we will work with this Blender 3D and then we will have um, enough time to practice this working with Blender 3D and that uh, all of you can construct uh, your own kinematic 3D body part, let's say, but for those, um, but some of you can also construct the whole 3D body model. So um, the applications, how to use the Blender software, as I said, is in the, this uh, first video, but um, in this video, um, is uh, represented how to posing the knee very step by step um, how to uh, perform the 
how to import our uh, lower part of the leg into the blender, how to um, uh, adding the bones uh, within the scanet 3D mesh and how to add a, a joint with, uh, within these uh, two uh, bones. And then we will go uh, further how to um, make a kinematics with a moving manipulator bar button, how to perform a kinematics and uh, how to make a limits uh, in the knee that uh, we are making uh, a correct movements in the in the knee not to go <laughs> up with a, a lower part of the leg in a natural posture uh, so uh, every step is very well uh, described and will be also very well described with video materials and also we will do this uh, on a practical uh, way. Yes, um, maybe now some questions at the, for the third case. Um, so, uh, as I said, um, no, I, I don't said that, um, of course, uh, this kinematic, when we uh, construct the kinematic um, a body model, then we are adjusting it to the needed posture. And after that, we should um, export it into the final post mesh um, in the formats uh, which supports our 3D CAD system, or this is the STL, OBG, 3DS, DIE files. So in our case, you will see in the next, in the next uh, case, in the next case, uh, or also there, I can show you that we are importing our files, our files in STL files. So we have a, a teaching version of uh, Optitex. Uh, that's why we could not import any kind of, uh, of files, but STL and OBG is good, but with STL, is, it, it is uh, really very good uh, to, to work um, in, in our uh, version. Um, so, uh, what we are presenting uh, in, the, uh, in this, our uh, last case, so we are presenting you why virtual prototyping um, and how we can uh, support development of personalized garments um, by using uh, 3D virtual prototyping. So, uh, we are presenting you this uh, on the, um, uh, this part on the personalized smart heating pants uh, for wheelchair users. Why for wheelchair users uh, smart heating pants? As you know, the wheelchair users don't feel the um, uh, don't feel the lower part of their legs. These are paraplegics, or in the case of tetraplegics, they don't uh, feel um, their uh, lower body depend on the injury of the back, and uh, they uh, have no sense on temperature, and they on temperature or even the temperatures are high or they are very or they are low they they could not be so low um, at these temperatures uh, as uh, we can feel the low temperatures they are feeling the low temperature before than than we that's why they are wearing um, usually more more clothes uh, in the cold weather than than we and uh, they are not allowed themselves uh, to stay um, outside very long, um, a very long time, um, because um, they are not feel very good um, because of possible 
injuries according to the um, according to a cold weather and the same is for the for a very hot weather so um uh, when we are that's why when we are developing uh, smart heating garments we should know how to protect the people against the cold stress by realizing uh, them uh, the thermal neutral or comfort uh, conditions um, and which are the thermal uh, thermal neutral and comfort conditions so um uh, that's why um this is the the first point and the second point is that we need to know which body parts, if we are performing uh, a trousers, which body parts um, we can hit and which lower body parts in the trousers we should not hit. So, um, I don't know, say me, um, did you have uh, or, or see any uh, hitting trousers, the commercially available trousers where um, they have uh, heating uh, elements in a trousers? Okay, we, we can Google this. Uh, once uh, Professor Lieberben Langhoff uh, gave a lecture about the actor, some actuator which which can work uh, in a trouser as actuator in a as a also as a heating devices. Yes, yes. Thank you. So uh, there you could see uh, some uh, heating pans. So we could see that this is on the back part in the waist that there are the, the heating elements, that the heating elements are on thighs and on the lower part of the body or in the knees. So for, for uh, wheelchair users, uh, which are actually they are sitting all the time in the wheelchair, there is not allowed to um, to go there, there is not allowed to to heat uh, trousers uh, in the upper position of the the trousers. Uh, let's say on the buttock or in the in the waist, because these areas or below the thighs on the lower part, because they are in the contact uh, with a wheelchair, and also. For, um, and also because of some other reasons. So, um, and um, we actually know that we have a different kind of uh, heating elements. Uh, what I'm showing you before, there are uh, uh, these very electrically heated uh, elements which are imbibed in, in to the trousers that uh, we also have uh, heating garments with uh, fast change materials that can store and uh, release uh, a large amount of energy um, by charging the solid liquid state and of course so uh, the chemically heated garments this is the third options that use the reaction of chemical substances to generate uh, heat so um, our intention was to use, is our intention, now is our intention, to use the, the virtual prototyping. So uh, I um, listed you the reasons what we should know according to, um, according uh, to, to paraplegics, let's say, in our case. Uh, what um, attention uh, we should know, the temperature till which we can heat the trousers, where we can put the, the heating elements into the trousers. And of course, um, uh, there are, uh, listen, there are, uh, you can read about some, um, some hours uh, duration of heating 
of course, um, uh, every wheelchair users uh, wheelchair user want to be outside when it's cold um, more hours and in our investigation we see that still five hours they want to be outside when it's cold um, yes but from this depends the battery used for heating of the trousers uh, or we if we or we should have some um, charging into the wheelchair that um, the trousers can be heated uh, for five hours. Um, the, the another attention we should pay uh, when developing the the trousers pattern design. Why? We know when we sit in our trousers in our trousers for a walking people that our trousers uh, suddenly became too short. If they are fitted trousers, they became usually um, uh, more tight, more tight, and that the knee uh, line, uh, which is in the standing uh, posture, is in the knee. That is a a, a, a bit around till to ten centimeters higher uh, than uh, in a standing posture then we do not feel very good um, when we are sitting in trousers if uh, they are made of a fabric which is not very um, extensive or elastic and that's why we should adopt this um, pattern uh, design of a trousers to a sitting posture that the all construction lines are there uh, where should be and that uh, they are not too tight because the trousers for um, uh, for a wheelchair user should not be too tight to, to because the too tight trousers uh, eliminate the blood flow and um, a lot of other injuries came arise because of this um, and the first, uh, when we are developing, we should develop the um, correct uh, pattern design for a seating posture. And um, why is virtual prototyping also very good? Because uh, we can use, with, uh, we can adjust with virtual simulation uh, the hitting elements, the red one, are hitting elements on the correct position. In our case, in uh, our research, we received the answers from paraplegics and uh, of wheelchair users that they want to have hitted um, the tides, the, the uh, knees, and uh, around the ankles so uh, and that's why we are help uh, that um, with by a help of virtual prototyping we can adjust at the correct position the heating elements the all the conductive pads so um, uh, all the conductive pads from a heating elements through the belt on the other side of uh, the trousers on the right side there on the right side uh, we have the switch on off the microcontroller and the battery and of course these trousers are connected uh, with um, with an ampli uh, with application in the um, in the phone that um, the paraplegics have uh, always control on the temperature. There are temperature sensors uh, in uh, for measuring the temperature within the microclimate of the trousers. And they also have um, um, temperature of the outside and they always can control their temperature of their legs or microclimate within the trousers. So I, I can show you because we are approaching <laughs> very quickly to uh, to our um, 
to the end of this uh, lesson. Uh, let's see. And so we are developing this kind of uh, trousers. The, 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 the last prototype of these trousers have uh, um, is a little bit um, have a different uh, pattern pieces like uh, these presented uh, there. So um, in Maribor, in Maribor, I, we will have opportunity to did, to do this to to go uh, through all steps um, of the virtual prototyping, how to work with a pattern pieces, how to adjust pattern pieces around the through the human body uh, model, especially in sitting posture. This is um, much. We are doing this on other way than on a standing posture. How to uh, how to synchronize um, the uh, pattern pieces around the body posture. How to adding. Uh, you could see there are. Um, I'm showing you now. We are adding the seams. How to add a seams um, to make a virtual seaming of a trousers. These seams are these blue lines where you could see now how to add um, a mechan. Uh, okay, I should go out. Uh, how to add mechanical properties? The measured mechanical properties. We are using a fast measuring system for measuring of real uh, fabrics and uh, putting it into um, these uh, fabric parameters, uh, within these fabric parameters, that we are uh, performing a virtual simulation with, really, uh, with real measured garments that our result um, be um, as much as is possible uh, the real one. So, uh, yes, because there is one is, as in this case, a lot of pattern pieces, and then the virtual simulation is uh, going um, a little bit slower, but it will be. And uh, I can show you um, also that a fabric is also described as a mesh. And within this mesh uh, in the fabric, um, during the virtual simulation, um, uh, are calculated the mechanical and physical properties, what we can see it there. Uh, so the Optitex using the bending properties in X and I um, axis, that means in warp and weft, um, in the warp and weft direction. The, the stretch properties of the fabrics, the shear properties of the fabrics. Also, uh, we are using the friction, thickness and weight of the fabric. So, um, yes, we are not uh, received to the end. Um, then uh, also we will work with a shader manager because with a shader manager, we can uh, work with the visualization of um, uh, virtual prototypes very well. So uh, we have um, may, uh, add uh, layers of shader or we can choose uh, colors or we can add um, uh, our real fabric. Um, um, scan it uh, fabric uh, from um, our real fabric or from the library. We can choose the zips, the buttons, the uh, every kind accessories. What we are putting it on, uh, what we want to put it on the our uh, virtual prototype to make a better uh, visualization. Um, so uh, we approach to our result. We could see that our trousers uh, also have uh, some edge um, below uh, one ply, uh, which compress uh, the, the inside of the trousers, the, the trousers to the legs that the, the heat, the warm is not go outside to the trousers. 
Um, yes, um, I hope that in Maribor uh, we can do this uh, together. Um, so uh, the last uh, 10 minutes uh, is a stay, uh, maybe for some of your comments. Yes, we will use also the fabric converter and uh, we can use also our um, fast measuring system for uh, measuring the, the uh, mechanical and physical properties. The first one is fast one for measuring the compression of the fabric, uh, the bending of the fabric, the stretch of the fabric, uh, and also the stretch of the, the uh, samples um, in uh, uh, cut it from different angles. Um, so I I hope that I show you our module. It's a very uh, briefly uh, presentation, uh, but maybe if you have some questions now at the end. Are somebody um, working with virtual prototyping um, of students because we have uh, students from different fields? 